Hello, in this video, we're going to be fitting uh, wide to some trickier data. And by tricky, I mean that the data isn't linear. So if you take a look at here, you see there's some sort of uh, curve at it, uh, suggesting that it's not linear. Now let me show you go up and show you how I'm actually generating this data. Um, I'm gen generating uniform random numbers between about 0 and 5. Um, you'll see why I'm not quite going to 0 soon. I'm generating 200 of these numbers. And, uh, and then I'm adding in some noise. And, uh, and how, how does the noise work? Well, uh, it's a, a Gaussian normal distribution. And it's the same size as the input data. And uh, the standard deviation is 3. And so the equation we have, or the relationship between y and x, is we have 5 over x and x squared. And then we add in some noise. And so I'm creating that data frame. Um, it looks like something like this. Uh, but of course, logger, and I'm, I'm doing the scatter down here. So let's try to do the line fit like we've done before. Um, the first thing I'm going to have to do is, uh, is I'm going to do like this. I'm going to say from, from sklearn that linear model import linear regression, and, and just to save myself some typing, I'm going to give it a new name. I'm just going to call that class LR. Right? So I'm going to run that. And so now here I can try to fit that data. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to say uh, LR is a new LR object. LR is going to fit. Going to fit what? Well, let me go here and hit Shift Tab uh, to remind us. Oh, not there. Actually, let me just do this. Oops. What, what am I doing here? Okay. So I, I have to fit the x, the y, and so, um, right, and you can see that generally this is a matrix and this is a single column, that's why they're making that um, uppercase. But uh, let me do this, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say my x column, I want to fit that to the y column, and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, what am I doing here? Uh, this goes into... The fit, right? Okay, so I make my linear regression object and I fit it to some data. And this actually won't work. Let's take a look at this here. Um, why, why is it unhappy? Uh, it's unhappy because it's expecting this vertical <coughs> data, right? It's expecting two-dimensional data that's oriented vertically, and uh, and I don't have that. Um, there's different ways I could do this. I could say something like this: values dot uh, dot reshape. And, um, and then I could say, well, I don't care how many rows I have, but I want one column. Uh, I could do that. The other option that's going to be a little bit easier for me is um, instead of pulling this column out as a series, I can pull it out as kind of a smaller data frame. So let me just show you this difference here. Right? So if I do that, I get a series for x. If I, if I say, well, something like this, then you can see I'm pulling out a data frame. And if I wanted to, I could do this, right? I could pass a list of columns that only contains one column to get kind of a smaller data frame like that. And if I look at the values dot shape, uh, that's already something that uh, that is kind of like. All right, so this is kind of looks a little weird, but that's why I'm maybe doing this instead, right? I want to fix fit the x data uh, to this y data. I run that. Um, that seems good. And um, and then, well, what do I want to do? Let me let me take a look at, at what my uh, buff is, my coefficient, and my intercept. So I see I have that information there. Um, let, let me actually try plotting this. So um, when I'm plotting, I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say a, a, ax dot plot, and I'm going to have some x values and some y values, and uh, you know I'm going to make this a red line. So, so how is this going to work? Well, I'm going to get some x values here, and um, and then I have to get some y values, right? And, and and there's different ways I could get the y values. One is that I could multiply x by the coefficients and add the intercept, right? That would give me the y values. Um, but it turns out that linear regression objects already uh, make that easier for me with this predict uh, method, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to need that anymore. And, uh, and okay, well, what is x? Well, I'm just trying to draw a line. And so, well, I mean, I could take different points, but 
Um, you know, I'm just trying to draw that line as connecting a bunch of points, and, and I guess it doesn't really matter what those points are. They don't have to be uh, the same points as in the original data, because maybe I even want to extend beyond that. Um, so I'll just do something like this. I'll say mp.a range, and what do I got here? I have the start, uh, I have the stop, and then I have what is the step between these? And I'll just say I start at 0 0.1. Oh, and maybe I forgot to mention this before, right? But we're dividing by x before. And that's why I've been kind of avoiding uh, drawing too far to the left, right? So I'm gonna do this. And um, and I'm gonna have x. And, and just to be careful here, right? I need to make sure this is vertical, right? So I'm gonna say reshape, negative one, one. And, um, and you can see this is not a great shape. Uh, it's not a great fit. Right, I mean, maybe it kind of works okay for this data to the right. Uh, this data to the left, definitely that doesn't make sense, right? There's this non-linear relationship in the data and I'm forcing a linear line to it. So how can I deal with that, right? This is non-linear, right? One over X times five. This is non-linear, this X squared part. It's a linear regression, right? It can't deal with non-linear things, but what it is good at it is good at having a bunch of different features, right? It's very easy to do multiple linear regression where I'm trying to predict y based on, say, 10 different variables. And, and so think about that, right? We can't do uh, nonlinear things, but we can have as many columns as we want. And so the trick that people use is they add more columns. And instead of just having an x column, we're going to have an x squared column, an x cubed column, maybe a log of x column. We can add as many of these columns uh, as we want, and thereby kind of figure out um, how to make the plot that we're interested in. So, so let's let's do this. So I'm going to say uh, have something called uh, get x terms, and uh, what is this going to do? Well, it's going to take in an x column, and it's trying to create a new data frame. Maybe I'll just call this t for terms. I make a new data frame, and it's going to have an x that. Uh, is whatever is in that x column. And when it's all done, it's trying to return that. Then here, when I come back to this, we're going to add more expressions based on x, right? And those expressions could be, you know, all kinds of different things. A lot of flexibility there. So let me just call this to make sure it's kind of working, right? So I want to get x terms based on my original data frame of x, right? So I want to pull out this column. And then maybe computing different things based on that, like x squared and x cubed and so on and so forth. And, um, and well, I, I have to have a dictionary of columns like that. Okay, so I have my x values. Let's add some other ones, right? I'm gonna say things like um, maybe x squared is going to be t of x squared, like so. Um, I can add all kinds of nonlinear stuff. Maybe I'll say one over uh, x is going to be well one over over that like so. Um, you know, if we wanted to, we could add uh, you know like an x cubed. Um, we could add other things like um, maybe I want to have uh, what else might I have? I might have something like a log x. Right? So maybe let me say uh, log two of x equals. That one's a little bit trickier, right? I mean, if I say math dot log two. Of that, um, that's not going to work because this is the built-in one in Python. It doesn't understand how to do an element-wise operation. Uh, but there's another version in NumPy, right? So I can do that, add all these expressions, and uh, and cool, right? I can see that. Well, I have all these things, right? It's not not really more data, right? It's just different ways of looking um, at the data. And so we can kind of, if we fit to this, we can get around the limitation that uh, that that we have, right? That we can only fit to linear things. I'm like, okay, well, I'll fit uh, linearly to these five variables, right? And it doesn't matter that there's a relationship that's nonlinear between them. Okay, so so let me come back here and kind of work on this again. Let me paste this here. And, um, and so I have to tweak this a little bit. Let me, let me just have this for now. Um, you know what I think I'm gonna wanna do first is, uh, I don't want to fit y to x. Um, what I really would like to do is I would like to fit y to 
to this data frame. That's what I want to fit y to. So, so let me let me grab this piece, right? So I'm going to fit y to that piece. And um, and I guess for now, let's just do this. Let's say our uh, uh, lr dot coefficients and lr dot intercept like so. I, I can see that there's um a bunch of coefficients now. Right? I have a coefficient on the x column, coefficient on the on the one over x column, the coefficient on the log of two x column, and, and, and you can see a lot of this is, is is kind of fitting things that shouldn't be right. Um, for example, well, what should we see? Um, what I'd really like to see is a five on the one over x column and a one here, right? So I'd really like to see something like, um, you know, five on that column, right? So some error there, and then then a one on this column, right? So that's not quite quite right, but um, let's see how it looks when we actually plot it, right? Maybe it's still a good approximation based on some of these other uh, features, even though it's not quite capturing the original relationship. So I want to do this, right? I want to do an LR, and I want to do a prediction on on this x here. And um, and and you know what? I think that this, right? We need to do the same thing, just like we uh, just like we did this calculation before, right? On the original data, we have to do that here on this x column, right? This was original x data, and this is just kind of evenly um, spread out. And, um, and and you know what I think that the other thing that we need to do is is that it wants this to be a, a series, right? So I'm actually going to do um, do something like this, and I say that uh, well, I'm just going to get rid of this at this point. I don't need that anymore because uh, once I feed x, actually, you know what? Mm, yeah, I don't need it anymore. Okay, there we go. Right? Because I, I guess as long as um, let me let me just take a look up here, right? So here, right? I had I had kind of that vertical vector, and here I was getting a vertical vector. Um, here, down here, I'm just trying to do something one dimensional, right? So x is one dimensional now, and then it's trying to feed into uh, all this thing. So that's trying to work out fine. So you can see I actually end up with this nice um, fit line, right? Not perfect, but just kind of capturing that relationship. Let me let me just put this back too. Um, so that's working uh, pretty well. What would happen if I had like a lot more data? Like let's say I have like a thousand points. Let me run that. Now what's happening? Now, now it's actually getting a little bit better, right? I mean, this number is closer to five, and this number uh, is, is closer to one. Let, let's say let's say we have even more points. Let's say like we have like ten thousand, right? Eventually, if we have enough points, I should kind of figure out. About what that relationship is, and it's getting closer and closer, right? This is closer to five. This is closer um, to one, right? But at least for this limited range, right? There's different uh, kind of equations, right, or formulas over these different um, terms that will actually get kind of a similar, uh, similar shape. But if we get enough data, then eventually it'll kind of recapture the original coefficients, right? And then the other coefficients uh, get small because they're not factors um, here.